Hey, good evening. Good evening. We want to welcome everyone to our Midweek Connect Bible study right here on a Wednesday night, 7.30. Yes. So thankful you're joining us through virtual church, whether it's through our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Once again, thank you so much for being with us. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. I am so excited, Crystal, because we started this series last week on the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we talked about how important it was for Jesus to partner with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus depended on the continual flow of the Holy Spirit's power, wisdom, counsel, and the ability through him and upon him during his earthly ministry. Yes. And you know, the Bible also tells us in 1 John chapter 4 that as so he is, we are to be in this world. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus needed to partner with the Holy Spirit, how much more do you and I as believers need to par partner with the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. So if you have your Bibles this evening, turn with us, if you will, to John chapter 14 and verse 18. We're going to be looking, as we said last week, we're going to be looking at John 14, 15, and 16 as those are so crucial chapters because Jesus is instructing not only the disciples, but he's instructing believers like you and, you and I on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so John 14, 18, we're going to be looking at tonight. If you'll read that, Crystal, for us. Yes, and it reads, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now notice this, I am, I am not leaving you comfortless, but I will come to you. Mm -hmm. To begin, let's go up into that upper room where Jesus gathered his disciples on the eve of his crucifixion. Mm -hmm. He had just washed their feet, showing them the lesson of humility. Mm -hmm. He did not come to be served, but to serve, right. to give his life as a ransom. Then after the washing of the disciples' feet, he then partakes communion with them. Mm -hmm. He served the communion meal, and then he sets them down and he begins to teach them about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The teachings about the Holy Spirit that Jesus gave in that upper room will be the basis for what you and I will speak about and talk about in the next couple of weeks. On that last night, notice this, it's the very last night that he was going to be betrayed. Mm -hmm. It's right before he's about to leave his disciples. He knew that he was leaving the world, and these moments were actually his very last opportunity to teach them. Yeah. I mean, Jesus could have talked about, he could have spoke about many different things, many different subjects, but yet Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He talked about the power, the counsel, the wisdom. He talked about a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So Jesus allowed this last opportunity, he used this last opportunity to speak about the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine just for a moment being one of the disciples that has left everything and had been with him for three years now, over three and a half years, and now Jesus is letting you know that he's going to leave you? Yeah, it'd be a little troubling. I mean, I can only imagine how alarmed the disciples must have been at this moment when Jesus told them that he would be soon leaving them. Mm -hmm. Jesus had often warned them that he would be leaving, but... Little did they know that this evening, when they left that upper room, that Jesus would be taken away. Yeah. So there's only a few hours that we have, and yet the full weight of that reality had to fall upon those disciples. Yes. The reality that tonight's the night. Mm -hmm. A state of maybe panic, a state of, of um, concern. concern, dismay. Mm -hmm. And that's why John 14 and 1 starts out, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. So no doubt in that room, in that upper room, there was a sense of panic and dismay and their hearts were heavy because Jesus was about to leave them. Yeah. So it was natural for the disciples to feel sorrowful at the news of Jesus' departure. Living and walking with Jesus for more than three and a half years, mm -hmm. the one that they saw signs and wonders, the miraculous they, they lived with him. They ate with him uh, on a constant basis. They heard the teachings of Jesus. Yep. They relied so much on the Lord. Yes. And yet now they were going to lose him. Mm -hmm. They were going to lose the one that they relied so much on. Yes. No doubt they had to think, wait a minute. 
is our life ending? Right. Is our dreams coming to an end? And yet, we find here in the upper room, Jesus is letting them know about the Holy Spirit. Yes. And how important the Holy Spirit was not only to Jesus, but how important the Holy Spirit was going to be to them. Correct. And it was not only to them, but to you and I as well. Absolutely. So John chapter 14 and verse um, 18 that you just read Mm -hmm. is he uses the word comfortless. Now, it's important for us to understand something because I want you to underline that in John 14, 18. I am not leaving you comfortless. Mm -hmm. So the word comfortless in the Greek is where we get the word orphan. Matter of fact, if you would read out of the New King James, it said, I will not leave you as orphans. Mm -hmm. And a literal translation would be, I will not leave you as orphans. But something's unique about that Greek word, because in the, in the New Testament air, it had a wider range of meaning. Mm-hmm. For it was also used to describe students who felt abandoned by their mentor or their teacher. Right. Almost like being in an apprenticeship. Correct. And now it's kind of time to step out on your own. Most definitely. It's scary. Most definitely. So in the, the Greek was used to describe orphans who had lost their parents or students who felt abandoned by a teacher. Mm-hmm. It always conveys the ideal of a person who felt deserted by someone whom they trusted or to whom they looked for guidance. Exactly. So the word comfortless means not only was it a loss of parent or having no parents, but also there was another meaning, meaning a, t- a student has now lost their mentor, their teacher, that one that they looked to for guidance and they trusted in. Mm-hmm. And yet now Jesus is about to leave them. Mm-hmm. But Jesus gives them these, these words of comfort and says, listen, I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. Mm-hmm. In John chapter 16, Jesus lets them know, you know, it's expedient that I go from you. Mm-hmm. For if I do not go from you, the Holy Spirit cannot come unto you. That's right. Now think about that for a moment. Jesus saying, listen, you've relied on me for three and a half years, but I'm going to leave you. But it's expedient that I go from you, because if I don't go from you, the Holy Spirit cannot come unto you. That's right. And as you just read this evening in our text, he said, I'm not going to leave you by, my, by yourself. That's right. I'm going to give you someone that you can trust mm-hmm. and someone that will guide you in the midst of everything that, you, that you're going to go through. Absolutely. See, once Jesus was exalted to the right hand of the Father after the resurrection, the 40 days that he was here, and ascended up and had sat at the right hand of the Father and took the role, the place of intercessor for all eternity, once seated, it is then that he poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit upon the church. Mm -hmm. Today we understand that the Holy Spirit is the member of the Godhead who operates in the world. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus brought glory to the Father. Everything that Jesus did, he did according to the Father's will. So Jesus brought glory to the Father, but it's the Holy Spirit that brings glory to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so as Jesus was Lord over the church and is Lord over the church, we understand that the Holy Spirit carries out his lordship inside the church. So we live in the age when the Holy Spirit operates in the world. But the way that the Holy Spirit operates within this world is that he operates through through believers. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Ephesians 1.13 said, the Apostle Paul taught that the moment we receive salvation, the Holy Spirit enters into us and serves as God's covenant seal on our life in Him. So therefore, if we've surrendered our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has come to take up residence inside of us. Amen. So, I like this because what happens is the Holy Spirit wants to take up residence on the inside of us because our heart is his home. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And he wants to take up a permanent residence. Yes. So our heart is not a hotel, but it's a home. Mm -hmm. And there is a difference. There is a difference. (laughs) Because listen to this. As glorious as it is that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of every believer, this does not guarantee 
that they experience fellowship with him. True. So the question is, if he's never going to leave us as orphans, if he's never going to leave us alone, and he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to be mm -hmm. in us, to guide us, to, to give us wisdom, as, as Jesus partnered with the Holy Spirit, so we partner with the Holy Spirit in our daily lives. Absolutely. He's empowered us. So we understand that the question is, what kind of fellowship do you have with the Holy Spirit? Is he, ne is he a neglected resident mm. in your life? Or do you actually experience regular, intimate fellowship with him? That's so powerful what you just said. Is he just checking in for a season? Right. Or is he taking place or taking a home in the heart? Right. So it's up to us to have fellowship on a daily basis, intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And on that night, in that upper room, before Jesus was going to leave them, Jesus promised his disciples and us that when he ascended to heaven, he would not abandon us like Amen. orphans Thank you, Father. or like students who have been deserted by their teacher. Right. But yet he promised that he would come to us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And Jesus kept his word. Yes, he did. He always does. Always does. Remember in Acts when he said, listen, he said, I want you to stay here, stay in Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. Right. In Acts chapter 2, 120 are meeting in the upper room praying. And all of a sudden the Bible said that there was a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, mm -hmm. and it filled the house where they were, where they were seated. Yep. And the Holy Spirit was given at that moment. That's right. I'm so thankful that Jesus kept his word. Amen, me too. I'm so thankful that in the midst of his disciples beginning to lose heart, mm -hmm. Because now it's becoming a reality that Jesus, this teacher, their mentor, the their, their one that they've been with for three and a half years, is going to leave them. Mm -hmm. But yet Jesus reassures them with the word mm -hmm. and says, listen, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Mm -hmm. In that same chapter, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. That's right. I will not leave you as an orphan but the Holy Spirit will come unto you. Yes. That night in the upper room, Jesus promised, and Jesus fulfilled that promise. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you have never stopped to recognize the Holy Spirit in your life or experience what I call the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, tonight would be a wonderful time to begin. Yes. The Holy Spirit has been given to us not only to empower us, but it's given to us for wisdom, counsel, direction. Matter of fact, it is the Holy Spirit that brought us to a place of confession in need of Jesus. That's right. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts us of our sin. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals God's will and God's word to our life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit has been given to you and I so that we can trust in Him, we can depend on Him, he can give us guidance, guidance in the midst of our storm. Absolutely. And so I'm just so thankful that we're not left to defend ourselves. That's right. We're not left without a mentor, without a teacher. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our mentor. That's right. You know, John 14, Jesus made it clear that he would be leaving them. Mm -hmm. Later that night, of course, we understand according to Scripture, that he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. judged before the religious leaders of that day, sent to be judged by Pilate, then by Herod, then back to Pilate again. After following these experiences, he was then to be scourged, crucified, and buried. Mm -hmm. Crystal, all of these events would occur in a mere matter of hours from the moments when Jesus sat with them in the upper room and told them that he would be leaving. Mm -hmm. They simply had no idea how quickly he would be physically taken from them. Right. But Jesus knew. Mm -hmm. that, that, that blesses me tonight because Jesus knew what they were about to face. That's right. And yet 
He gives them the word and lets them know the Holy Spirit is going to comfort you. That's right. You're not going to be left alone. I will never leave you as an orphan. That's right. So many times the Lord will enlighten us yes. to certain things that are going on in our life or what might be ready to take place in our life. And we envision it usually a whole lot different than how it will come about. And But if we lean in on what he has instructed us and rely and keep the Holy Spirit operative in our life, we will, because of the trust factor, we will see it played out. Just like these disciples, they were worried. I'm sure they had, they all had their own thought pattern of how this was going to play out, what this was going to look like. Probably nothing as though it did and how it happened. But because Jesus told them and they have witnessed his word power in the past, mm. they learn to trust. They're like, okay, wait a minute. Let's get back to the basic, to trust in him. He's never failed us. Everything he's ever spoken to us has come to pass. So they started trusting and realizing what he had spoken, the revelation of what he had spoken. And because of that, they were able to settle and rest in him. And that's the thing is when we're going through the season of waiting to the word has, is being mm. coming to pass, we have to learn to rest in him. We're not to have full understanding always, but we are to trust and rest in the Father, knowing that he has our best interest at heart. Another thing you said about the Holy Spirit taking residence in us, either being a guest mm -hmm. or having a home. Correct. When I am a guest in someone's home, I feel welcomed, but it's different. It's not my home, so I, I'm not as free to hmm. to to go about and do like I would in my own home. I want the Holy Spirit to feel that it's his home, that he can take full measure. And that is also up to me to make him feel at home in my life, to keep him, um, how do I want to say this, to keep him active, mm. engaged That's in my good. everyday doings. That's good. You know, for over three years, the only voice that the disciples heard was the voice of Jesus. Correct. They walked in his footsteps. They followed his directions. As a mentor, Jesus had taught them everything, how to cast out devils, how to heal the sick, how to travel in ministry, and on and on. Mm -hmm. The full extent of the spiritual training that Jesus imparted to his disciples included far too many things to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. In fact, Jesus had taught them everything they knew regarding spiritual matters. Right. So anything that they, that they learned during those three years was all the spiritual matters is what Jesus taught them. Mm -hmm. So he says, listen, as much as you trusted me so much that you left everything and, and followed me, mm -hmm. now I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. That's right. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. We have to defend for yourself. Now I'm going to send one like me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to send the third person, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. He's going to come and he's going to abide in you. Yes. Now he's going to be your teacher. Yes. Now he's going to be your guide. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to be your partner so that you'll be able to do all that God has called you to do upon this earth. Yes. I mean, how, man, do you think about that for a moment? Mm -hmm. To leave everything and follow one man? Only for that man to leave you? Yeah, it would be very disheartening. They had, to say, they had to stay so in tune with what Jesus was telling them. Yeah. To say, okay, I, we're, we're going we're gonna to listen. We're, gonna, we're, we're not going to jump ship here. Right. And then to experience that upper room experience to know mm -hmm. at that very moment, Jesus fulfilled what he said. Yeah. That the Holy Spirit fell in the upper room mm -hmm. and begin to reside in individual believers. Yes. I mean, how awesome it is. And I love that knowing that they were going to face this, Jesus spoke the word of God to them to comfort them in that day and hour. Right. Let not your heart be troubled. You're going to see some things take place in the next couple hours that's going to spin your head around. You're not going to understand. <laughs> right. 
you're going to run in fear. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we find later the disciples are locked up in fear. Mm -hmm. But don't worry. Yep. It's important for me to leave you because if I don't leave you, the Holy Spirit can't come unto you. Right. And so we just want to encourage you this evening as we look at God's Word and we understand that the Holy Spirit has been given to every believer, not just to temporary come in and then to leave. Right. But he wants to reside. He wants to reside within our heart because remember, our heart is to be a home for the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not a hotel. That's right. And he'll guide us. He'll guide us. He'll lead us. He'll strengthen us. Mm -hmm. He'll continue to show God's word to us so that That's we right. can grow. And so I'm so thankful this evening. You know, maybe you're there and you're listening to us and you, you've been thinking, you know what, I feel all alone, especially during this time of still this pandemic and the COVID and things that are happening where the spirit of isolation has really gripped the heart of, of this world. Yeah. Can I tell you that you're not alone? That's right. That the Holy Spirit is there in you mm -hmm. and working among you. That the Holy Spirit is your guide, is your counselor, is your strength, and is your wisdom. And if you'll just acknowledge that tonight, if you'll just acknowledge that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, if you'll continue to have daily fellowship with the Holy Spirit, He longs to spend time with you. Mm -hmm. He longs to be able to have fellowship with you. And as we do that on a daily basis, we get stronger and stronger in the Spirit. For it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the, the Lord. Lord. So That's be right. encouraged tonight. You're not an orphan. That's right. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. Yes. And it's up to us to be able to continue to have fellowship with him. Yeah. Let's pray over those that are watching tonight. You know, I, I just sense in my spirit that those, there's some out there watching that have felt isolated. that have felt like you're all by yourself. But be encouraged, child of God. He's right there with you and in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we just praise you and we thank you. Father, we thank you for your word this evening. We thank you, Father, that you are a God that has given us the Holy Spirit. Yes, you have. The Holy Spirit that is our comforter. The Holy Spirit yes, that is not leaving us alone, but a Holy Spirit that comes on the inside is our teacher and is our guide. Absolutely. And Father, as the disciples put their trust in your son Jesus, we put our trust in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, I pray for those that are discouraged tonight, those that are experiencing, Lord, a, a tormenting spirit. Father, I declare peace that surpasses all understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare, God, that you, Holy Spirit, would anoint their hearts and anoint their minds. May they right now understand that they are not alone, That's right. but you are there with them. Amen. Lord, I pray for every need under the sound of my voice, that you would touch every situation. Yes, I thank you, Father, that you are the God that healeth thee and a God that delivers. Yes. So we give you praise and we give you the glory. You, In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Once again, we are so thankful you joined us this evening for our Midweek Connect Bible study. We are excited talking about the Holy Spirit. Also, don't forget this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. We are live right here on Encounter Campus. We would love to see you this coming Sunday morning. If you can't join us um, live here on the campus this coming Sunday at 11 a.m., we would love for you to join us at 11 a.m. through Virtual Church. Yes. Love to have you uh, be with us this coming Sunday. Um, Sunday morning where I'll be ending our series, Persistence in Resistance. And uh, God's just been moving. God's doing some incredible things in our church and in our families. Last Sunday, we started our Sunday school back. Mm -hmm. So don't forget, 10 a.m. is our Sunday school. It's for our student ministry, young adult and adults only. Yep. And um, we had a packed house back there in our yes, Equippers building. Did. And just excited in what the Lord's doing. But we're praying for you. We love you. We appreciate you. Also, don't forget, if you're wanting to give your tithes, you can do so online. You can go to EncounterCOG.com forward slash give, or you can also mail those ties into the uh, office here 
or you can stop by Monday through Thursday from 9 until 1 and drop them off in person. Hey, we love you. We appreciate you. Praying for you. Have a great Wednesday night. Hope to see you Sunday morning. And remember, we are Encounter Strong. Be blessed in Jesus' name.